Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another show from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Burn Nick, and today I'm going to tell you all about my trip to Vegas. So, uh, yes, I'm flying solo because, quite frankly, it's just a recap episode of TPE 2024. Um, but don't fret, you're not just going to hear my voice for, you know, an hour plus. Uh, I've got plenty of interviews coming up with all kinds of different brands and companies that I met on the show floor at TPE in Las Vegas. So, before we get into all of the fun of Las Vegas, let's get a little housekeeping out of the way. And, guys, Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. They normally sponsor the cut, but today, because I'm talking about, like, you know, 19 different brands, I decided to go with just a nice, generic, unbanded cigar from my time down in Ybor City, um, so that uh, nobody... You know, nobody gets the plug. Nobody gets the the push as being the cigar for TPE. But anyway, um, so, uh, so I already cut and lit my cigar. But uh, the Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri, they have all kinds of great cigars, guys. They have all kinds of cigars from a variety of different companies. They have the full line of Aladino cigars, as you can see my spiffy Aladino hat. And uh, they have all sorts of other great cigars from Perdomo and uh, J.C. Newman and Fuente. They have a ton of Fuentes. If you're looking for some nice uh, rare opuses or rare rare Fuente cigars, you know, give Riverman, Riverman Cigar Company a call. He normally keeps a good stock of those Padrones, um, you know, Al, uh, uh, Agonorsa. There's all kinds of great cigars for you to pick up over at Riverman Cigar Company. And if you're looking for a place to sit and chill and have that cigar, Dan has a wonderful lounge that you can relax in if you're in the St. Louis area. But if you're not in the St. Louis area and you want to support a brick-and-mortar store, you can always give Dan a call because he does do mail order. So you can get those cigars sent to you right away. It's Dan the Man Ponder of Riverman Cigar Company. And normally this would be the time I would cut my cigar. But I've already done so. So, anyway... I am jumping right into it because, like I said, I have a bunch of interviews. I also have a slight bit of cracking going on right at the head of, or uh, the foot of the cigar. And I'm trying desperately to carterize the little splits so that I can burn past them. And uh, it's uh, proving to be problematic. So, you know, if I'm d dicking around with my cigar, guys, that's, that, that's what's going on. Anyway... So, TBE 2024, it ran from January bu -bu -bu, 31st. Hang on, let me bring up my calendar. You'd think I'd remember this. This wasn't that long ago, um, but, uh, you know, here I am. So, it was actually January, January, Wednesday, January 31st through Friday, February 2nd. Um, I went out to Vegas on Tuesday, January 30th. I flew out of St. Louis um, that after early, you know, right about noon time, got to Vegas at a little after two Vegas time and uh, proceeded to my hotel. I stayed at the Sahara again. A um, little bit of issues with my check-in. Apparently, uh, they don't like it when you use a business credit card that uh, just has the business name on it and not your name. You know, they've accepted it in the past. They accepted it for my deposit this year. Um, but apparently at the time at the check-in counter, they didn't accept it. So who knew? Probably lots of you. I didn't because like I said, they've accepted it in the past. So why would it be any different now? But anyway, so after getting checked into my hotel, um, I proceeded to get checked in at TPE. TPE, it, I will say there's a lot of benefits that I like about TPE. They, they have the nice little check-in table right there at the hotel so you're able to get your badge printed up right there and so i did that and uh then from there i saw neil from max smoke shop shout out to neil um i was you know i feel bad i told neil that i was probably going to go up to my room check in you know go up to my room and uh relax for a minute then come down and uh sit at the bar and have a drink and a cigar I ended up on Tuesday 
going to my room and being exhausted. And I proceeded to do nothing. Uh, I got DoorDash delivered to my room. And I crashed somewhere in the neighborhood of about 8 o'clock. Um you know, which I know that sounds early for everybody, but that, that actually is 10 o'clock central time. And I had been up since five o'clock in the morning. So, you know, it was a very long day. And so I really didn't do anything on Tuesday, but Wednesday guys, I'll tell you what this TPE out of the now five that I've gone to, I have been more on top of it this year than I have in any previous year. This year I made it to the show uh, in time for the media hour every single morning. Um, I got interviews done during the media hour every single morning. This is like, this, this blows my mind, guys. Blows my mind. So Wednesday, I was up. I was up and awake by 5.15 Vegas time in the morning. And I was up and awake. Went and uh, had myself a nice breakfast downstairs. Um, prices in Vegas are still, still ridiculous ridiculously high they are not dropping those and uh to be honest it makes that town really unfun um but that's neither here nor there but anyway i went and had a nice breakfast went and uh you know got dressed and uh you know took my time getting ready and made it over to the convention hall and from there i met up with uh some folks in the media hour which you'll hear those interviews coming up shortly and uh I pretty much spent Wednesday after the media hour just kind of getting a lay of the land, just walking, you know, uh, lots and lots of walking at this show. And <laughs> this year was different. So in all previous years, the four previous years that I've been, um, it's just been one show floor. And I've talked about this on the show before, before how cigars are on a red carpet and all of the other products are on blue carpet. And that way you can kind of tell where you're at. And when I say other products, I mean a variety of other products. Um, a lot of vapes, um, admittedly, a lot of CBD, THC, uh, a lot of mushroom gummies this year coming out. I, it, just all kinds of different products that, um, you know, smoke shops and convenience stores and whatnot are, are, are interested in. Um, this year, TPE expanded to two floors. So the second floor of the convention center is where TPE has been held the previous four years that I've gone. And it was only just that one show floor. This year, they had that entire show floor. So think of the entirety of TPE, the previous four years. The entirety of that show floor is just blue carpet. Then on the first floor, so the bottom floor of the convention center, TPE was set up there as well. And uh, ah, that went out. Um, that show floor was 75% blue carpet, 25%, um, red carpet. So 25% premium cigars. So in previous years, you would say that cigars were 25% of the show floor. Quasi legal drugs were 75% of the show floor this year. I would go so far as to say that cigars were one eighth of the total show floor, both both stories of the convention center, and that uh, quasi legal drugs are three, you know, seven eighths of the show floor. So they've expanded significantly in terms of show floor square footage. And they've expanded significantly in terms of what products they're carrying, but not cigars. And, uh, you know, it, this, this show took a hard shift to the other products side of things this year. Um, and I will also, you know, I'll get into some of the rest of the cigar side here in a bit. But, you know, the blue carpet side, I walked it. I walked, I walked the top floor that was nothing but blue carpet, and I walked the blue carpet on the bottom floor. And I'll tell you, um, it was a circus. I, it was it was pure bizarre circusry. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about you know Mike Tyson being at TPE and Chris Brown was at TPE and uh, Cheech or not Cheech Chong Tommy Chong was I think supposed to be there I think 
Um, I don't know if he was or not, but the bottom line is some of these guys definitely were, but they were there for blue carpet products. They weren't there for red carpet products. You know, there was some rumor that, that, um, uh, Guy Fieri was going to show up at the Espinosa cigars booth. I don't believe that actually happened. Um, you know, it's, it's just kind of one of those things that the blue carpet was the circus and it was, it was significantly bigger and, and larger than the red carpet stuff. I don't understand how so many different companies can be selling for all intents and purposes, the same product. You walk through this blue carpet stuff and you just see these little, you know, rectangular vapey things and everybody's got them and they all look a look the same and they all for all intents and purposes i believe contain similar products within them i don't i don't know uh but it's it's so bizarre to me how there can be so many of these companies selling these cheap you know chinese vapes and and everybody's like buying different ones from it. i don't i don't get it i don't i absolutely don't get it but anyway in terms of the cigars though um, part of the reason I really wanted to go to this show was I wanted to see what the impact of PCA moving from July to March was going to have on this show. For the last year, I've been asking people on this show, um, you know, what do you feel as though the impact is going to be? And admittedly, everybody's given me nice answers about, oh, you know, it'll be okay, it'll be fine, you know, blah, blah, blah. It serves different different segments and this and that and whatever. Um, let me tell you with 100% certainty that I was right, and it gutted the cigar side of this show. And I'm just going to be honest about it. You know, uh, coming up, I'm going to have lots of interviews, and no disrespect to any of the people that gave me interviews. Um, but everybody was trying desperately to put a nice spin on the event. Everybody was trying to be polite. Um, you know, nobody wanted to, um, nobody wanted to be direct because they didn't want to show any, they didn't want any perceived rudeness towards the people that did come out. They didn't want to show any perceived rudeness towards the event organizer or anything like that. I get that. 100% understand that. And I don't mean to be disrespectful to anybody who did come out and the event organizer as well. However, in terms of the event organizer, I think they saw PCA move up from July to March and they doubled down on the blue carpet in order to to, you know, maximize out whatever money they had coming in and then everything else. Um in terms of the uh cigar or uh retailers, um They chose to stay home. They chose, for the most part, not to come out. There were not very many um, retailers that did come out. The ones that I spoke with said they were able to do their business in a day. And um, that day was Thursday, by the way. And I'll get to why that day was Thursday just in in a bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, these, these retailers, they were able to get through the cigar side very, very quickly. Um, you saw a lot of booths where reps and companies were sitting around talking to themselves, having nothing to do. Um, there's one company all to this, um, whether or not this is true, I won't, I, I don't know. They didn't confirm. Um, however, I will say that I heard from at least two or three different sources, uh, from booths surrounding them that following the first day. They sent all the sales team home. The only people they kept for Thursday and Friday at the booth were the the bosses. But that but that in terms of the sales reps that they brought in for the show, once they realized that this was going to be such a slow show, they they put them back out on the road. They said, "Get get back out, get get going." Um, the majority of booths that I went by, sales reps were on the phone. They were dialing for dollars. They were calling their 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 retail partners in their territories and they were offering tpe deals over the phone which then begs the question of why a retailer has to spend money to go to las vegas to go to a show if their rep is just going to call them up and and give them those deals anyway um this was this was this was it was an interesting show to see but it was one of those things where 
you look at it and you're like, what is the point of this now? Um, and I'm and 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 I have an answer. I, I do have an answer to that. I actually did. Uh, uh, so I was talking with one one uh, cigar rep, and he actually gave me his perspective on that answer. Um, he said that uh, the booth space at TPE is so cheap versus PCA that with the investment they have at this company, and it's a it's a mid range company. Um, that with the investment they have in terms of booth space and in terms of bringing their people in, so f- flights, hotels, uh, dinners, you know, that sort of thing, that as long as they hook up with maybe like one distributor or they get like maybe a couple of couple of orders, you know, totaling up. But if one distributor comes along and decides to place a $10,000 order, they've made their nut. They've covered it. The show is taken care of. So, you know, the, the, the barrier to entry is very low, which means that the, the, um, uh, the amount of sales they have to do is pretty low in order to make that, make that worth it. Um, so maybe that's the problem. Maybe the big guys are the ones that are expending a lot of money and they, they need more sales and they just can't pull it off. I don't know, but it was an interesting show to see. And it was very, it was very obvious that the blue carpet side was getting the love. The red carpet side was just kind of along for the ride. And, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But with that all being said, uh, why don't we now go ahead and jump into the first set of interviews um, so that we can uh, we can talk um, with some of our friends at TPE. So here is the first set of interviews from TPE 2024. So we're here with Mark with La Galera Cigars. How you doing, Mark? Good. How are you, Nick? So te- Welcome to TPE. Thank you. I would normally start off by asking how uh, how the show's been for you, but uh, given the fact that we're doing this in the media hour beforehand, um, I guess you don't really know yet. So well, everything showed up on time, so it's a good start. Then half the battle's already <laughs> exactly. taken care of. Very cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about La Galera? So La Galera is an 88-year-old company, five generations deep owned by Hochi Blanco, his son, Jose Manuel, and his other son, Daniel. We have been manufacturing cigars for La Galera since 2015, and we are seed to smoke. We own farms, fields, contractually, generations deep. We produce the second or third largest amount of tobacco in the Dominican. Very cool. And uh, what sort of uh, cigars do you want to highlight from the line to my listeners? We make a Connecticut that is mild to medium with lots of flavor. We have a Maduro San Andreas that is straightforward medium bodied. We have a Habano that's medium plus with an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. We have Imperial Jade, which is a real African Cameroon wrapper, over 100% Dominican fillers. We have the Anamwa, which is a Connecticut broadleaf with all Dominican filler. And we also have the 1936, which is the year the company was founded which is a box press cigar with a Habano Ecuador wrapper. Very cool. Well, is there anything that we uh, that you want to highlight? Anything specific you want to talk about? I know, you know, when we were talking earlier, you were saying that, you know, you're one of the older companies that people just don't really quite know. Correct. We've been, we've been known as Tobacco Lera Plama, which is the factory name in the Dominican Republic, and that company has existed since 1936. La Galera launched in 2015, and we are looking to make it people's go-to cigar and starting to get the brand name out. Perfect. Well, where can people learn more about La Galera? www.lagalera.lagalerasigars.com. Perfect. Mark, thank you so much for taking time out. I really My do pleasure, appreciate Nick. it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Have a great show. Thanks, you too. So we're here with Jonas from Blackbird Cigars. How you doing, buddy? What up, Nick? Wouldn't be TP without a little time with Jonas. <laughs> so how you doing? Everything's great. I'm so happy to be here all the time. Vegas yeah. is Vegas and business and pleasure all the time. There you go. So what have we got new to show the people? What about we take you to a trip to paradise? Okay. Superb is the bird I like of trips paradise, to paradise. And I think we're gonna talk more next week at our show. Yes, so yeah, we're t- we're kind of keeping it light today because you're gonna be coming on and you will be the featured guest in the uh, January, no, February 13th episode. So Sorry. it's been Valentine's Day with you, buddy. <laughs> it's gonna be so in love. So lovely. <laughs> but anyway, would you like to give just a little preview about the Superb? Do you really want that? Just a little hint. All right, it has a very 
good notes of nutmeg. I'm gonna leave it right there. Something okay. unique. Okay. It's Havana. First Havana that I make in the core line. Okay. We can talk more. We can talk more about it in your show. We will because do that. you know how it is. Nobody can clip our wings. There you go. Well, where can people find out more about Blackbird Cigars? Blackbird Cigar. That's it. Instagram. There you go. So Perfect. easy. Jonas, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time, man. All right, and we're here with Oliver Nouveau of United Cigars. How you doing, yes, Oliver? Sir. Man, I couldn't be better. I'm so, in Vegas at the TPE 2024. Loving life. There you go. So, it's TPE. What do you have to show the people? So this year we're launching the Firecracker Connecticut okay. at the TPE show, and this is a line extension to our to our Firecracker. There you go, uh, to our Firecracker line. So last year at the PCA we launched the Firecracker Black Bomb. This year we're doing the Connecticut. So it just kind of broadens the portfolio, right? So now yeah. we have Connecticut, the Sun Grown, and the, and the Maduro. And uh, these are the an like all year, not the like special oh, annual release. Correct. No, it's not. It's not the annual release like the Lunatic Firecracker mm. coming out in June. <laughs> but that's only made by Agonorsa. So uh, worked with Terrence on, on that. Very excited for it. Um, so that as a, as a Firecracker retailer, then you have access to those limited releases Fantastic. that come out. They do come out once a year, but sometimes we do something special. Uh, during the year, so yeah, we're we're excited for it. But this is the one that's available all this year is the for one, people. Uh, yeah, available year round. Uh, Six dollar retail box of twenty five. It's a fantastic little uh, forty five minute smoke. There you go. Yeah, can't beat and it. it's a nice firecracker for those maybe who are the more mild kind of smokers, right. right? Yeah. Look, if you want to light up the skies in the morning, that's the that's the firecracker to grab. So there you go. Yeah. Well, perfect. So yeah, no, excited for the show. We got the we got our La Gianna. I'm lighting up the angelic. Uh, this morning, so it has the little sweet tip. Yeah, we have the full line of Red Anchor available now, so we're and the we're fancy really ashtray oh, there. We gotta, guys, we gotta show off this gorgeous thing. This is the the Red Anchor ashtray. It's gonna come in a nice, uh, nice red package box. So for display for for retail sales, it will, it will be great. But to have this on your counter, uh, have it in the store, you got the Red Anchor on both sides. So it's a nice little nice little piece, so we're excited for that. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Well, where can people find out more information about United Cigars? If you check us out on social media, at United Cigars, uh, we're, we're always available. Our website is unitedcigargroup.com. Perfect. Oliver, thank you so much for taking time right. out. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And we're here with Pedro from Drew Estate Cigars. How you doing? We are doing great, brother. Fantastic. We are right here in Vegas. This is TPE 2000, 2024. 24. 24, <laughs> there you go. And we are very excited to be with you guys first thing first. So shout out to Cigar Pupil. Thank you so very much for the amazing support that you guys do for the industry. And thank you so very much for stopping by. I appreciate it. So what have you got that you want to show the people? Okay, what we got going on right here at Drew Estate, we are showcasing our cigars line. We got our traditional cigars line, like the Undercrown Shade, the Undercrown Maduro, the Undercrown Tem. We also have some amazing collaboration, like Papi Van Wilco by Drew Estate. Of course, Black by Drew Estate, our collaboration with Metallica. Very have you ever popular. Tried that I have, I have actually. Oh, man. It's strong. Strong, that's right. <laughs> that's how James Hetfield, lead singer of Metallica, wanted this cigar to be. Yeah. Maduro to the court, and this is what this cigar is all about. We also have right here the Factory Smoke, which is our bundled cigar presentation for our Drew Estate fans up there. We are also the exclusive distributor for Hoya de Nicaragua, the oldest cigar factory in Nicaragua, mm -hmm. and they have amazing cigar brands, and they do a great, 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 they make great cigars. For sure. Also right here we got the Nica Rustico, which is our value price, a traditional cigar, where we have a medium body in the Nica Rustica Duby, Adobe, I'm sorry, and Nica Rustica Broadleaf, which is medium to full. And then we got the Herrera Esteli as well as 20 acre farm. When it comes to Drew Estate, we also make infused cigars like acid cigars, tobacco special. We also have this delicious cigar that is called Deadwood. Oh, yeah. At the end of the day, you know, we got a little bit of for everybody. Cigars that we make for every different palette out there. Fantastic. And where can people find out more about Drew Estate Cigars? Oh, absolutely. Well, you can go to www.drewestate.com and find everything about us and our website. Or you can, it, you can do this, which is even better. Follow Drew Estate on social media. And we are about to launch or do the grand reveal of our freestyle life. Ah. So that's going to be in March 15th. So everybody that is getting those freestyle life pack, there is a 
barcode that everybody have to scan and people are gonna be entering to the Swift Stick. We are gonna be giving amazing prices, but March 15th is gonna be the grand reveal of the mystery cigar that is going around right now. Fantastic. Pedro, thank you so much for taking time Nick, out. The pleasure is all mine, and everybody stay smoky, all right? I'm here today with Wayne from Placencia Cigars. How you doing, Wayne? Hey, so far so good. It's bright and early on a Friday or whatever day today is. I don't know. I like, it's Vegas. We never know what <laughs> day never, it never is. Know. Exactly. So what have we got here at Placencia? Yeah, so it's a really exciting time to be a part of Placencia. We've got so many cool projects working right now. I just came back from Nicaragua, and if I told you everything that, that we're working on down there, I'd have to kill you. I, mean, it's, we've got <laughs> I don't want six, that. I don't want that. We've got so much coming in. But what's really awesome is our most recent Cosecha line. Okay. And I'm not sure if uh, the general public is aware of what the Cosecha line is meant to be, okay. but it celebrates specific crop years for the Placencia family. So the Placencia family's been growing tobacco right now for 158 years, and we've never missed a harvest in those 158 years. Interesting. So these two here, the 151 and the 149, celebrate the 149th and the 151st harvest uh, for Placencia. Both of them are 100% Honduran Puros, and there's not a whole lot of Honduran cigars on the market or Honduran yeah. Puros, so we really wanted to get out the word that Honduras is happening. Yeah. Some of the best tobaccos in the world come from Honduras, and we want really to show you guys uh, what we're doing up there. So I think uh, by the time this episode airs, the episode prior to that, I smoked a Cosecha 146 yes. in the Torpedo yeah. from a gift pack that I had from a couple years Amazing. back. So what's the difference perhaps between that one and then you're talking about the 151? Great question. Yeah, so so like the 146 is a combination of tobaccos from Nicaragua and Honduras, okay. uh, both from the 146 crop. Um, these two here are Honduran Puros. So, okay. so there's a big difference in flavor profile. Yeah. Uh, on the 146, the wrapper actually was a Hamastran wrapper from Honduras. And then the, the binders and fillers were a combination of both. Okay. Uh, whereas this is 100% Honduran tobacco. For instance, like the uh, Cosecha 149, that has an, a wrapper from Azacualpa in Honduras. Okay. Or Lancho Azacualpa. And this wrapper right here, uh, is um, from the Hamastran region, so it's a little bit different. You get more sweetness, you get more of the, the beautiful flavor profile of Hamastran. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So where can people find out more about your line and more about Placencia Cigars in general? Yeah, so all you have to do is go to PlacenciaCigars.com. We have an amazing site. You can locate all of our retailers right on that website, or you can visit us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, all kinds of fun stuff happening. So Perfect. We'd, we'd love to have you come along. Perfect. I have to say, Placencia Cigars, they're one of those brands that um, when I'm looking for a celebratory cigar, something that's really, really that I know is going to be awesome the minute I smoke it up, that that they, I look to you guys. The Alma Fuerte, big fan of the Alma Thank Fuerte. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It means the world to us. And, you know, we have a lot of people in Nicaragua that, that are working hard to make sure that these cigars come out great. They do an amazing job down there, and uh, it's just the beginning, my friend. Just there you the go. Well, thank you very thanks, much for taking time out. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks. And we're here with John with Christoph Cigars. How you doing, John? Good, Nick. How's everything been? Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about Christoph Cigars. So um, big things coming this year. Uh, we are about to celebrate our 20th anniversary, so this will be a big year for us coming up. Uh, we will have some new stuff to display at uh, uh, PCA in March, mm -hmm. so we'll have that there. Uh, but for the time being, while we're here at TPE, here in Jan uh, January, February, we are showcasing product that we released last year and the year prior uh, that are all doing outstanding. Um, so we're showcasing our Trace Compadres, our Nicaragua, the guardrail, and then of course JT Signature and the Woodlawn 685 on the end. Uh, very fortunate, Half Wheel gave Trace Compadres our number four cigar of the year oh, very this cool. year. So that was a, a nice little kiss uh, and a welcome, a, a welcome surprise. So that's been excellent. Uh, other than that, we're just kind of doing our thing and, and trying to get into year 20. There you go. I got to say, I recently smoked the Nicaragua, and I love it. It Fantastic was so good. Stuff. 
a lot blend, of flavor and strength. Blend on that stick has been fantastic. Yeah. You know, I, they're, they're somewhat similar blendings when you get down to it. Yeah. Uh, with just a couple of little variations, but those variations are just enough yeah. to really change the complexity of both cigars and give them drastically different profiles. Fantastic. So. And where can people find out more information about Christoph Cigars? So you can actually go to Christoph.com. Uh, in fact, we're in the process of revamping the website, making it a little more user friendly. Uh, and so you'd be able to pick up all of the information there. And for our retailers, if you need contact info, all of our rep information is on there as well. So retailers can figure out who they need to contact if they're not doing business with us. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking time out. My pleasure, Nick. All right. And we're back. So let's get back into the story. So um, like I said, Wednesday, Wednesday was a rough day. Wednesday, apparently, from from all accounts, uh, talking with retailer or uh, manufacturers, Wednesday started off very nice, and by about two o'clock in the afternoon, dropped off a cliff. The show floor opened to retailers at noon on Wednesday, so for the first two hours of the show, they did all right, uh, and then by two o'clock, they dropped off a cliff. Um, Thursday, Thursday went really well for uh, a number of manufacturers, uh, from what I was told. And the thought on that, after speaking with um, one uh, sales rep, was that, so because TPE was offering free rooms uh, to retailers on Wednesday and Thursday at the partnering hotels, be it Sahara or Caesars, um, because they were offering retailers free rooms on Wednesday and Thursday, the thought was, that um, some retailers were going to fly into Vegas on Wednesday, spend Wednesday night at their hotel, go to the show on Thursday, do all their business at the show on Thursday, spend Thursday night at their hotel, and fr fly out Friday. Meaning they were going to take a three-day show, condense it into one day's worth of, of work. You know, they'd go to the party Wednesday night, and then they'd go and do their, their work on Thursday on the show floor and then fly out on Friday. And given the amount of sales traffic that everybody kind of like, you know, told me about, I think that's how things went down. I think the, the retailers that came in, they, they, they came in Wednesday, they did their work Thursday, and you could very easily cover the red carpet in one day. Um, you could get everything taken care of in one day because part of the red carpet was blue carpet companies. That's the other thing. Um, you know, when you look at the show floor, you say, oh, the red carpet's a solid 25 percent of the of the bottom floor. But there were a lot of blue carpet, blue carpet companies that crept up onto the red carpet. And I, I don't know if that's because of uh, cigar companies reducing their booth space and leaving empty space or if cigar some cigar companies backed out. And that's why there was empty space. But the bottom line is there were a lot of blue companies in the back half of the of the red carpet. So, you know, you had a lot of uh, of you didn't have a lot of cigar companies to hit if that's what you were there for. You could do it in a day very, very easily. And um, especially if you were going in and you knew what you wanted. If you went to a booth and you said, hey, Aladino, I need to you know, I need to re up. My order, here is my order. I'm literally bringing you my order to the show. Um, you know, you could be in and out of a booth in no time, you know. Let's be real. There wasn't a lot of weight at a lot of these booths. Um, even the big booths, you know, uh, Drew Estate, Perdomo, I mean, they had large sales teams that were there, you know, ready to, to take your business. So, I mean, it, it's, it's one of those things where, yeah, you didn't have to wait really anywhere for, for customer service. You could just walk right in and get your sales done. Um, anyway, so so Thursday was admittedly a better day for cigar companies based upon what I was told. Um, however, however, it definitely was still down. Um, I was told in one case that if in, let's say, 2023, a company did... Three hundred thousand dollars in sales at at TPE. That this year they did a hundred thousand dollars in sales. So like it was definitely down. It was definitely down. Um, but you know uh, Thursday was another day, a good day uh, in terms of uh, 
me being productive. I got a lot of interviews done on Thursday, and uh, that was nice. And, um, you know, normally I have to be conscious of the fact that these guys are doing business and that they don't have time to uh, to sit and talk with me, you know, and that sort of thing. But uh, thankfully, this time, um, that wasn't really the case. I was able to walk right up and get a lot of these guys. So it's it's kind of funny. The year that I actually used the media hour and that sort of thing every day was the year I really didn't need the media hour in a lot of cases. But that's all right. Um, so... Um, before I get into the next set of interviews, I'm going to go ahead and finish up the, villa, the the TPE recap here. So I did not go to the party, the industry party this year. I did not go to the industry night party because, quite frankly, the industry night party was held at a different hotel from mine. There was another convention in town, actually, um, and they had taken up the bulk of the Sahara, um, which is where I was staying. And that's normally where TPE holds their industry party, it's where they normally have their big block of rooms and all that kind of thing. This year they had to ex expand out to the Caesars because um, it was a it was a corporate retreat. I don't know what company it was, but there were all these people in badges going around and everything. And I talked to one of them on the last day they were there. And it was some corporate retreat and they had everybody in and they, they reserved the pool and they did everything for their party. So eh, it was what it was. But I was not in the mood to go from my hotel to Caesars for the industry night party. Trey Mac and Joel told me I missed a very good time. Um, on the flip side, you know, Ken Claritch from Ash and Ale told me that uh, he was 11 stories above the nightclub and he could feel the rumble in the floor from uh, from the, the <laughs> music, you know, down there in the nightclub. So... I suspect I didn't miss anything that I wouldn't have uh, been just totally turned off by. Um, but that's okay. Uh, I got a good night's sleep again. Woke up early on Thursday. Went and did the show. Uh, you're going to hear all those interviews here in a minute. Um, Thursday night, I had a, a wonderful evening. Um, my my lady friend uh, came along and she went out. And the two of us went out Thursday night and had a... Had a very, very lovely evening in Las Vegas. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Then Friday, um, we got up, and uh, I went to the show Friday. She stayed back at the hotel. Um, oh, I, I'm remiss. Th Thursday morning, I met up with Ken and uh, you know his friend Mark, and uh, we had breakfast at a place called Bagel Mania. And Bagel Mania was delightful it was the, the, it was the find of the trip for me um i was so into bagel mania um super 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 good and also uh you know we uh we we ended up going back to my lady friend and i went back to bagel mania saturday morning so so i went there twice uh over the course of my trip to vegas it was that good so Bagel Mania, highly endorse it. Anyway, Friday I went back to the show. Um, I uh, got some more interviews done. I kind of was doing mop-up work on Friday, you know, kind of hitting the people that I hadn't uh, been able to hit prior. Um, so I got a few more interviews on Friday. And then from there, I'll be honest, I left the show by like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it went until 5 on Friday, but uh, by 1, I was gone. Um, it was, uh, it was just kind of one of those things. Everybody was just kind of standing around saying hi to one another, staring at one another T foot traffic on Friday was very, very light and low again. Um, the only thing that anybody was really talking about was the fact that Tyson was going to be there at some point. I saw some pictures of Tyson kind of glad I didn't wait for Tyson based upon some of the stories that I've heard about that. And, uh, you know, it just kind of is what it is. So no, I, um, I, I opted not to stick around on Friday. So Friday, I went back to the hotel, uh, did a little, a little, little bit of gambling, um, you know, just kind of hung out and uh, was what it was. Saturday, my lady friend and I, we, like I said, we walked down to Bagel Mania. Um, I will admit that after walking the show floor for three days, walking was probably not a great idea for me. I probably embarrassed myself pretty significantly there, but... 
thankfully she uh she hasn't indicated to me that that was a, a deal breaker yet so i guess we'll see and um anyway we flew back home saturday and we were a bit delayed but made it back relaxed and here i am so uh why don't we go ahead and get into the next round of interviews now and then we'll come back and do a little bit uh, more fun stuff. So we're here today with Scott from ZR Cigars. How you doing, Scott? Good. Good. Thank you for stopping by. No, nah, no problem it. at all. So tell us a little bit about ZR Cigars. So we're a very boutique factory in the Dominican Republic. We own our own factory. Uh, we just have 12 rollers. We've been around about six years or so. Uh, so we're fairly new. This is our second or third show we've done. First one here at TPE, so we're very excited about that. This is our new ZR Nicaragua cigar that just came out. It is a Nicaraguan Puro okay. uh, Maduro. So very full body, very full strength. Uh, just came out. It's 50 count boxes on these. Oh, wow. And okay. we have a Robusto Toro. We actually have a Bellicoso as well that we don't have here. And then we have Gran Toro, uh, the 60 ring gauge. So this is kind of what we're pushing here and selling here at the show. Okay. So that's kind of what's new with us. But uh, we've got all kinds of different, you know, Varieties from mild to full body, limited, high end, you know, low, you know, fairly inexpensive, stuff like that. And then we have these awesome Ooh. wooden ashtrays that are all one piece of wood, actually. So these are handmade. We don't sell these, unfortunately, which we did. We probably make more money than uh, I was going to say. Cigars, those are but, pretty smooth. But uh, yeah, they have our logo there and everything. So. It's all handmade, hand carved out of one piece of wood. So nice, very very cool, and uh, that's it. So there you go. Well, you where guys. can people for, uh, learn more about ZR Cigars? ZRCigars.com, of course, oh. or on our Instagram at ZR Cigars. There you go. So, Scott, thank you so much thank for taking you for time out. Yeah, Appreciate yeah, it. Problem. Thank you guys. And we're here with Rami from West Tampa Tobacco Cigars. How you doing? I'm doing great today. How are you? Fantastic. Now, before we get too far into this. My listeners love your cigars. So every year we do, so we're the cigar pulpit, and every year I have my parishioners, my listeners. Okay. What we do is we do our own top list. Last year was top 10, this year was top 25, because right. they nominate they nominate all the cigars, they vote amongst themselves. I have nothing to do with it whatsoever. Last year, the black was their number one pick. This year, the red was their number one pick. Outstanding, outstanding. And of your cigars, of the top 25, everything but the boliche. Okay. Because it hadn't come out yet at the time that they were doing the voting. Okay. So my listeners love your cigars. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on at West Tampa Tobacco? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. And thank your listeners for uh, for giving us a vote. That means the world to us. You know what I mean? So thank yeah. you from the bottom of our hearts. West Tampa Tobacco Company. Listen, a couple-year-old company. Uh, we actually have, like, three official blends, uh, like, on the market. We do some special edition, like the Beliche yeah. and the Attic Series, which... Is the you, red? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sort of, kind of. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah. So we have the uh, the uh, black, white, and the red. Uh, uh, we just have uh, you know kind of three solid blends for the everyday smoker. Uh, price well, like I like good price cigars. So we kind of thought to the market, why why not have three uh, three very good everyday uh, everyday cigars, well priced, kind of accessible to everyone. You know what yeah. I mean? We don't like to do that hidden and like. You know what I mean? You got to jump through hoops or jump well, through thing, ring of fire to get it. We don't. And, we don't, we don't and do that these stuff. days, everyone with their budgets are yeah, looking for something yeah, that's yeah, budget friendly. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, is like we're kind of like you know blue collar guys. You know what yeah. I mean? Trying to you know what I mean? Trying to make our way in the world. And uh, we figure, yeah, why not make make uh, great cigars accessible to everybody? So, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for sure. Yeah. So where can people find out more about West Tampa Tobacco? Uh, WestTampaTobacco.com. We have a website. Uh, we actually have like a little like. Uh, e-commerce site on there we sell some t-shirts hats all that kind of stuff so Very if you cool. like uh if you like the swag uh you know check it out and then it also tells you uh what uh our uh, great list of retailers all across the united states and in 38 countries around the world too very cool yeah, yeah. thank you yeah, so much for taking so much. time out thank you so much I congratulations so much. again thank you so much You're all right, and we're here with scott with warfighter tobacco company how you doing good how are you fantastic so TP 2024, what have you got to show the people? So uh, we don't have anything new this year, but okay. the, our latest newest thing is our uh, night shift. Uh, we came out with that last year at PCA. Okay. Uh, but it is our Esquiro Habano, uh, medium bodied. It's gotten a lot of really good reviews. And we've been, it's been selling like crazy, so. Fantastic. Yeah. But. Now tell us a little bit about the brand, because you guys are obviously veterans. Yeah, so, so Warfighter Tobacco, we started about seven years ago. 
Uh, we're all veteran owned, all of our employees are veterans. Uh, my business partner John and I happen to be in the same platoon together in the Army. Uh, and we deployed together in 2003. So we, our story goes back a long ways and yeah. Warfighter came about because we didn't know how to brand something that wasn't just who we are. Yeah. So Warfighter is literally who we are and it's it was easy for us to brand it that way and that's kind of kind of why we did it that way. So. Perfect, perfect. So where can people find out more about the line as a whole and maybe how to get it and maybe what shops you're in? Yeah, so Warfighter Tobacco, uh, we do sell direct to consumer, okay. but on our website, check out our dealer locator. So we have a dealer locator, you can find it a shop nearest to you. Uh, if you don't have a shop close to you that carries it, Ask them to carry it. That's how we've gotten into over 300 shops now. So. Fantastic, though. Well, have a good show, Scott. All Thank right, you so much it. for taking time out. Good talking to you. So we're here with Luis Cuevas, the Costa Cuevas Cigars. How you doing? I'm doing well, Nick. Good to see you Thanks as for always. Thanks coming by. No, this is great. So how's the show been so far? It's a slow show. I got to be honest with you. I appreciate I'm not, I'm, the I'm honesty. I'm not going to lie. It's no. a slow show. It's I, the slowest one I've ever encountered. I appreciate and, the uh, honesty because I've heard that from others. But the PR spin is obviously, it's been a great show, but, but I appreciate the honesty. It, it's been slow. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you, it's been slow. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to today. I think today is going to be a, a different day than yesterday. Yeah. Always the first day people are trickling in. Um, Getting the lay of the land and all that. Sure, yeah. but uh, nevertheless, it's just been a slow show. Okay. Yeah. Well, what I hope has not been slow is the growth and expansion of Casa Cueva Cigars. So why don't you talk to us? A little bit about the line and maybe what you got going on. Oh my God, we've been going at this now for seven years, and um, this every year we come out with something new. Yeah. And this year, what we've got new is the Mandaria Oscuro, which is essentially, if you may remember, back in 2019 we had to break and we were robbed, and the sledgehammer was born. Yes. Because he's a sledgehammer. Yes. Well, now what we did was this year we came out with a Maduro version of it. Okay. Um, it's an Abano binder, San Andres wrapper from Mexico. And then the fillers are Pennsylvania, Nicaraguan, Dominican. But the cool thing is we have a different iteration of the original one. We waited a long time to do this, not because we were trying to be careful. We were originally trying to use wrapper from Brazil. Ah. And we couldn't procure it with enough certainty that we could do continue it. Continue. So ultimately, we just went with San Andres, which we get all the time yeah. and we're comfortable with. So yeah, we're proud of it. We're happy with it. And uh, that's the new launch. They're ready to ship. They'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. As soon as we get back next week, they'll, they'll ship out. Perfect. So, yeah. Well, we'll thing. have to get you on the show for a longer time. Yes. You know, here coming up soon. But for now, where can people find out more about Casa Cueva Cigars? Uh, go to casacuevascigars.com. Uh, our website is there. Um, and that'll tell you everything about the family, the history, our line. And it's also got a list of retailers by territory. You can kind of pinpoint them and, you know, go out there and ask for them, guys. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. And we're here with Coleman from Sinistro. How you doing, buddy? Good. How about you, Nick? Fantastic. <laughs> so why don't you tell us a little bit about the brand and maybe anything specific to TP yeah. that you want to highlight? Yep. Um, so our cigars are made at La Aurora in the Dominican Republic and also El Artis in the Dominican Republic. Our top selling cigar over the last few years has been The Last Cowboy, which comes in a Maduro in a Connecticut. But for the show, we're showcase we're uh, we're highlighting our new our new size for the Alboro. The Alboro came out two years ago, but this is a new size. It's called Conico, which in Spanish means little cone. <clears throat> and it'll come in 50 count boxes, and they retail for only six dollars and forty four cents a oh, cigar. That's a nice affordable it, price point. Yeah, it's our it's our value brand. Yeah, it's still all it's still grade A wrapper. It's all premium tobacco. We kept costs low by doing inexpensive bands, inexpensive boxes, and our, our margins are lower on these. So we just wanted to. We kind of released this cigar as a, as a kind of like to help the consumers and the retailers with an inexpensive premium cigar. Got to keep that dollar cost yeah. average down. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. But it ta it's like a cone. It tapers down from a 38 down to a 60, 60 okay. ring gauge. So oh, these, so that's nice. So it's for a guy that maybe uh, doesn't like the bigger ring gauge, but they get the bigger ring gauge on the front, but they don't have to have that yep. mouthfeel yeah, situation. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And then... It, um, so that size will be shipping, begin shipping to retailers end of February or early March, and it'll be available in the Maduro and the Corojo and the Connecticut. It'll be the same price for all, $6.44 for either blend. Perfect. It's all the same blend, just different wrapper. Perfect, yeah. perfect. So where can people find out more about Sinistro? So I always tell people, go to SinistroCigars.com. We have a uh, find a retailer hyperlink. You can click on that. If there's nobody close to you, I always tell people, just Google Sinistro Cigars. There's a lot, um, several online retailers 
Just Google the word Sinistro Cigars if there's no local retailers near you. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much for yeah, taking time you, out, man. Thank Have a good show. Brother. Thank you, man. You too, man. All right, and we are here with Pat from Perdomo Cigars. Pat, how's the show been? Man, believe it or not, we've actually had a great, we beat our last year's first day numbers. We're going to beat second day numbers this year. It's actually been a good show for us so Perfect. far. Um, with the trade shows so close to each other this year, we kind of were wondering how it was going to go. Yeah. But, hey, it's Perdomo, and you know what Perdomo Pat says, smoke the rest and smoke the best, baby. There you go. So, we sell a lot of product. So if you haven't bought it, get over here and buy it. Speaking so, of products, let's yes. talk about the product a little bit. What so, have we got going on? We have everything top to bottom. We're the only fully vertically integrated company in the business. Uh, Nick grows all his own tobacco. We make all our own boxes. The only thing we don't make is the paper products. Okay. And it's a company out of Denmark, I believe, a phenomenal graphics company. Yeah. Uh, but everything we make is made in Nicaragua. Okay. We have farms in all three regions of Nicaragua. Uh, Nick grows everything himself. He's he, he's very good at it. Yeah. Uh, I've never met a Perdomo cigar I didn't like, so it's amazing to us. I mean, the champagne has been our staple of the company forever. Um, it's a medium body cigar, lots of oak and almond flavors. So in 2020, he came out with the 10th Sun Grown and the 10th Maduro, right in the middle of COVID. Yeah. 2021, the Maduro made number one cigar in America. Wow. It was crazy. That cigar is so incredible. I tell people, I said, it's, it's to me, it's actually a mild Maduro. It which is. It's kind of out of the realm. But it's got a lot of flavor Chocolate, to it. cocoa. Yes. I tell people, I said, if you drink coffee, smoke it with your coffee, it tastes like dark hot chocolate. Ah. It's the most amazing flavors. So, but we go from this, it's all six year age tobacco. Yeah. We bourbon barrel age all of our wrappers by wrapper, so it's eight months, 10 months, 14 months by wrapper okay. in bourbon barrels, and it's just a wrapper leaf. Um, it pulls out the last of the impurities out of the tobacco, the same reason bourbon companies use bourbon barrels or yeah. charcoal line. It's a heating, filtering process. It gives you a really clean smoke, unbelievable smoke. The only product that has got more is our 12th year, uh, double aged, so it is aged 10 years in bales and then two full years every leaf in bourbon barrels. So oh, it's wow. a very unique cigar. We also last year came out with the 30th anniversary as yep. a tribute to Nick and Janine's 30 years in business, which is really impressive. Uh, it's 15 year age tobacco, phenomenal cigars. It's only in 75 stores across the U.S. right now because it is 15 year age tobacco. Yeah. It takes a while to get it. So Nick won't release it. A day before or a day after, he ages it to the time. Um, so if you're looking for the cigar, go to PerdomoCigars.com, find a retailer on the tab, yeah. pull it down, and you can find all the 30th locations, whatever state you're in. Perfect. Um, so if you're looking, go grab one. Uh, yeah. I'm, the Sun Grown to me is... Uh, That's the uh, only one I've had so far uh, is the Sun Grown, and it's amazing. It's incredible. It's a great it's, cigar. It's, it's been ranked already this year. Which really? Is because it came out late last year. Ah, yeah. So usually it won't be ranked until this year, this year. but we already got some rankings on it. Uh, the Maduro is super chocolate. Uh, the Connecticut is just a medium medium plus cigar. Okay. Uh, kind of in the 20th realm. Um, so the Champagne and the Habano series are all six year age tobacco. The 20th is eight year age tobacco. Okay. So we go from six year age tobacco to eight year age tobacco to 12 year to now 15 year age tobacco. So everything we make is phenomenal and one of the greatest things because Nick has 18 quality checks through the process of making a cigar yeah nothing gets missed yeah uh, we are told all the time we have the most consistent cigars in the world the draw the draw I know the draw it testing is incredible yep. yeah he does draw he draw tests 100% of the cigars come out of our factory yep. and I tell people if you get to the point in a cigar that you're almost done with it right about here on the band if you're done with it and want to Try to prove me wrong. Yeah. If you peel the wrapper leaf off, it's very thin, thinner yeah. than paper, you'll find a mark. And that mark's an alcohol pen. It's non toxic. Okay. But they're all different colors because each draw tester has a different colored marker. Okay. So I told a guy that in an event one time. He said, Hey, you're a great salesman because you're all full of crap. And I'm like, <laughs> Come on, man. I'm telling you the truth. And he's yeah. like, No. So I prove him wrong. I just lit a church hill. So I carefully peeled it off. And I'm like, Right there's the mark. And he's like, I'll be dang. That's there you it. go. You'll never get a bad draw, Thanks. ever. And Nick always says, "Why smoke a cigar that you got to stick a coat hanger in to get it to draw?" I 100 percent agree. Because I don't have time for that. No, and it changes the draw of the cigar. Yeah. So it does not give you the same flavors, and it, it's. 
I had a guy in the event pull one out of his pocket. I want Nick to make these. I said, I'll tell you what, why don't you take a picture of it, post it on Facebook, and tag Nick. See what his reaction is. Nick was like, no, nah, man, we don't stick anything in our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see Nick's reaction. Well, yeah, yeah. Nick is a very passionate man, He's, and he should be. It's his company. Hey, it's you his know name what? on the box. When you put that much effort into oh, it, yeah. you get quality results out yeah, of it. The man never so. sleeps. I mean, I think the man sleeps two hours a night. I mean, he's he, he oh is on go nonstop. Um, but it's the passion that he has that drives us as reps that makes us work harder. There you uh, go. Because, you know, we have a system of way we merchandise a store, and the system works. He's done a lot of research on it. Him and our vice president, Arthur. Oh Kemper. yeah, these uh, the shelf talkers oh, here and everything. Huge. I hear that from a lot yeah. of retailers. How like people that, are that very silent visual. salesman, man. Yeah, yeah. They, people like colors. So when they walk in a humidor. Oh, this pops. And they see the red and the yeah. blue and the gold, and they're like, oh, my God. They immediately go to it. In a sea of brown, yeah. there's that little bit of that color. That little color, and that's yep. huge. And yep. He's a genius for it. I there mean, the, the guy's a, a genius. I have nothing but respect and props for the whole family. And they treat us like family. He's a family-run business, and we're all treated like family. So Perfect. It Perfect. makes us I think it makes us work harder. You know? Well, yeah. You know, you have a personal oh, yeah. investment in yeah, it at we, that point. We try to have the same drive that he has. No, we don't really get close because that man never sleeps, like I say. But, you know, <laughs> we try. <laughs> you try. Well, where can people find out more about Perdomo Cigars? PerdomoCigars.com. Yep. And Nick has a YouTube channel, Perdomo okay. Cigars on YouTube. Check out the videos. Nick started these videos back during COVID. They're phenomenal. First video is how to cut and light a cigar. Yep. I worked retail, and you can ask anybody, hey, you know how to cut and light a cigar? Oh, I know. And they they cut the cap off. Butcher and, it. Yeah, so it's basic information that nobody wants to ask because men men don't like to look dumb. So. Uh-huh. No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> so he, it goes all the way from that. I think his last one, I haven't got to it yet, but I saw previews. He does uh, pairings with bourbon and scotch. Oh, very cool. Stuff that people want to know, but nobody tells them. Yeah. So, and it's phenomenal. His videos are very informative. I love it. I, I mean, no other companies are doing instructional videos like this. Yeah. Uh, he stepped way outside of the box when everybody else was hiding from COVID. Nick's growing. Nick's moving. So, perfect. perfect. And, and it's awesome. It's uh, But, yeah, check out us on YouTube, Perdomo Cigars. Uh, go to our Facebook page. Find Locator Retailer, and they can tell you where 12 year is. They can tell you where 30 year is. So find those cigars, man. Get them in your hands. There so, you go. Well, all Pat, right. thank you so much I for your time. I appreciate you, Nick. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great show. Thanks. You all too. Right. We'll see you later. Thanks. All righty. And so, anyway, that would be the next round of interviews from TP. I've got one more round coming up, but I'm trying to break these up so that it's not, you know, just a giant chunk of them for you. Um, but uh, for now, let's go ahead and do this. It's time for the Villiger Cigars Entertainment Report, brought to you by Villiger. Villiger Cigars, one of the leading cigar and cigarello manufacturers in the world. Founded in 1888 and still family-owned and operated. Head over to VilligerCigars.com and check the store locator to find a shop near you that carries them. We guarantee that Villiger Cigars will be a wonderful addition to your humidor and cigar rotation. All right, guys, so I got a couple things for you here. So first things first, TV show recommendation. Um, This is one that my lady friend found, and we quickly got sucked into it. It's called The Beef, and it's on Netflix. And it's about um, this guy and this gal who get into it in a road rage incident and decide to start exacting revenge on one another, and it just kind of spirals out of control from there. And you, you, this show goes in directions that you'll never see coming. Um, it was highly entertaining. It's like 10 episodes and I don't think they're super long episodes. So anyway, check it out on Netflix. It's called The Beef. Then over in terms of podcasts, we got a podcast recommendation. One I have been listening to is called The Interruption. And it's all about um, an incident that took place in South uh, Southern United Kingdom in uh, 1977. And uh, or South... England, I guess it would be, uh, 1977, where um, a TV inter- uh, TV broadcast was interrupted by the deep voice of uh, what was an alien overlord 
issuing a warning to humanity to lay down their weapons of destruction and embrace peace before the age of Aquarius. Um, and that there was only a short time for them to do this and all that kind of thing. And nobody was ever caught, you know, for this interruption. Nobody was ever prosecuted. Nobody, you know, whatever. It was blamed on college students and everything. And so this guy is basically diving deep into this and trying to figure out, you know, who did this and whatever. And it's it's just been fascinating. It kind of reminds it, it. They even bring this up. The Chicago incident with Max Headroom. They bring that up in the show and everything. So, no, I've been very entertained by um, the interruption um, on uh, wherever you get your podcasts. So that would be um, my my uh, Villiger recommendations there. Um why don't we now go ahead and you know what? I'll 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 do this now. I was going to wait. Guess what, motherfucker? All right, it's time for three cigars I smoked and enjoyed this week. And um you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this now. I'm going to wait cuz I've got a guest coming up for Tuesday's show. And so, you know, because I didn't do a pinky fun fact on Tuesday with uh, my dad and Ken, I'm thinking I'll go ahead and do a pinky fun fact now, and I'll shit, I'll, I'll swap them. Normally, I've been doing the three cigars smoked and enjoyed this week on Fridays, pinky fun fact on Tuesdays, but I'm thinking I'm going to swap them now, and I'm going to do the pinky fun fact now, and I'll do the uh, the three cigars I smoked and enjoyed this week on tu- next Tuesday's show with Jonas Santana from Blackbird Cigars. He's joining me to talk all about the line uh, extensions that he's got going on and, uh, you know, what else is happening at Blackbird. So stay tuned for that. But first, Pinky Fun Fact. Hey, it's your girl Pinky. Ready for a fun fact? Mickey D's? More like Mickey D's nuts. A person eating fast food regularly will consume approximately 12 pubic hairs per year. Ew. This has been Pinky, and I'll be back next time with more fun facts. Well, that's uh, that's disturbing. So, anyway, uh, thank you for the the fun fact there, Pinky. Um, that's uh, it's unsettling. All right, well, guys, like I said, we got one more round of interviews here to go. So why don't we go ahead and jump right into those? So I'll see you on the flip side. All right, so we got Angelo from Founders Cigars. How you doing? Excellent. How's Excellent. the show been? You know, it's been slow, but it also has been good because in the last couple of years we've made a lot of friends in the industry, and so you get a lot of you get to spend a lot of time. You know, hey, how was the year? How's your year kicking off? You know, catching up. How'd your PCA stuff go? So it's it's just been good for relationships in general. So perfect. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the line. Yes. And uh, tell me a little bit about your cigars. Yeah. Just kind of. So we. There we go. Zoic. The lights are the top. There you go. Awesome. So Sorry. we launched in 2020. Okay. And I tell people the entire reason we have cigars is to trick you into community. Okay. It's Brian's an Air Force vet. He's active Air Force Reserve. So when we launched the company in 2020, it's when the world was shut down. So much isolation, depression, anxiety, suicide, all that, which is rampant in the veteran space, went off the charts in the civilian community. Yeah. And so we're, we had been doing stuff in the firearms industry and had been kicking around an idea for this. And at that time, I was smoking cigars weekly with a group of guys. I was like, wow, my mental health is actually really good right now because I weekly get face-to-face interactions for hours at a time with people that I trust. And I was like, we should do something to promote this. Yeah. The cigars seem to be just an awesome catalyst to get people to hang out. So that's literally the, the heart of the company is just tricking people into community. Um, the nuts and bolts behind that is our cigars come out of Dominican. Uh, Luis Cuevas from Casa Cuevas. That's our new factory that we went with starting in January of last year. So really happy to be working with them now. And then in the last year with Brian deploying, we did a whole cigar band reband, uh, new boxes, new factory, just everything. We looked at it and said, hey, this is going to be a tough year anyway. Let's see if there's anything we need to change while you're gone. So when you get back, we can just go. Yeah. And so it was a whole year of building. And now at, at the shows, it's all here now. So it's, it's kind of exciting. Fantastic. Yeah. So where can people We'll find out more about Founders Cigars. Yes, yeah, so our website is going through a rebrand still. Okay. <laughs> but FoundersCigarCo.com is a great place. We do a lot on Instagram too, so we try to do. I try to put the camera on my 
face often for stories and just a behind the scenes. Here's what we're doing in the office. Here's some shenanigans. I did a whole like seven post thing and all me organizing boxes in our shipping and receiving yeah. area. And I was like, I bet I've lost 99% of my audience now. But at least for you that stuck to this part, this is what I think about on a daily basis. Hey, so, look, it's the behind the scenes. Yeah. It's the real behind the yeah, scenes. Absolutely. So, so we, we one of our core values is, is being approachable. Yeah. You know, approachable cigars, approachable as a brand, approachable just wherever we are. And so it's like, why wouldn't we show, you know, we, we're, we're not a 30-year-old cigar company. We're a three, four-year-old cigar company. My last name's not Rodriguez. So I don't have a grandpa from Cuba. <laughs> so it's like, let's show people what it's like to start a cigar company and what it takes in the day-to-day. -day. So, And I think a lot of people like that because yeah. there's a lot of mystery behind how you do it and, and how it goes. And we're just making it up every day anyway. So There you go. There but, you go. Uh, yeah. so, it's, so, yeah, our Instagram's a good thing. If you want to reach out to us, if you have any questions on Instagram, too, we, we try to be as active as we can on there. And we've got some online retailers that carry us if you're interested in the brand. And Little Guy Cigar Company out of Arizona and then Toro Cigar Company out of Virginia. Those are two great partners of ours. They would try to push all of our online business too. But uh, yeah, we try to do as many events, charity stuff as we can and get out there and meet people, shake hands and smoke cigars. So Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking time out. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thank you very much. So guys, we're here with Sam from Crux Cigars. How you doing, Sam? Hi. Yeah. Hello, pulpit parishioners. So how's it been? It's good. It's good. We're meeting some new retailers. We're seeing some old faces, old familiar friends. That's good. Um, we're hanging out in Vegas, smoking great cigars. There you go. You can't I mean, complain about that one bit. Some of us are getting paid. Some of us. Not me. Well. Some of us. I'd pay you, but I'm just a, I'm just a worker bee. I understand. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. So that means you're getting paid, so that's good. We hope. There you go. All know. right. All right. So, um... Do you have anything you wish to highlight or promote? Um, no, uh, not not at this show. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort and and, yeah. and into our newer blends and newer things I that we do. You briefly, Sam. Oh, I just want to introduce you to my son. Hello, Caleb. Thomas or Caleb. Nice to meet We're you. We're gonna meet the son. Very yeah. nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you guys. Good catching up with you, brother. Yeah, brother. Always good to see you. This is the year. We're going in, man. So we'll be getting. We'll do it. We'll do it. I'm here. So we're doing business that's as we're Tom. recording. That's my friend Tom. Tom uh, from, uh, give a shout out to the shop. Well, he, he's, he's opening a shop, so that, oh, that's what well, he was okay. saying. Like this year, he's going to get us in, and we're going to—he's going to do it. Um, Big T's Smoke Shack. Okay. Uh, is his—he does like barbecue. He does all kinds of stuff. Just bought a beautiful new truck, which has nothing to do with cigars, but I saw it on Facebook. Um, yeah. So, anyways, um, we put a lot of time and effort and, and thought into what we release. Yeah, um, for sure. We don't just throw new things out to just for the sake of doing so. Um, so we don't have anything to debut here at this show. Um, we're, we're we're always working on blends. We just have to make sure they're right. Yeah. You know, do things the right way, not right away. Do things the right way, not right away. Gotcha. I coined that phrase like yeah. on my own, and I can't even say it right. So I mean, it's all right. You try. That's what matters. I'll give when you I that. say it right, I sound smart. People go, like, dude, that's great. But then when I jumble it, people are like, you read that somewhere in like a training book, and you're an idiot. So back to the cigar. <laughs> I didn't want to pounce on the effect. Have, have I derailed an every conversation that we've had when you've interviewed me? Probably. I feel like I have. It's your thing. I gotta be the worst right. cigar interview ever because I'm like, yeah, we got good cigars. We're smoking. So, anyways, I'm an idiot. Here's my saying. I didn't want to say it. He's got a it. truck. I didn't want to say it. So yeah, call me an idiot. Anyway, it's fine. so uh, how have things been with the uh, Habano Epicure? Because I kind of love that cigar. Amazing. A lot. I know you posted a lot, and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of yours for yeah. that. I mean, I was already a fan of yours. Well, I appreciate that. But um, that cigar is killing it for us. If you have not tried the whoa whoa, yeah, you have not the tried the Crux Epicure Habano, you need to try that. Um, you know, it's uh, it's killed it for us. I mean, we started shipping it, you know, mid last year. We've sold out a couple times. Yeah. Um, we, we currently have all the sizes back in stock, which we're very happy for. Down the road, I'm sure you'll see some new sizes on that because it's in four sizes right now. Yeah. Corona Gorda, Toro, Robusto, and Agordo. Um, it's actually what I'm smoking right now, but I, I pulled the band off. Um, that is one of my absolute favorite cigars that we make. Um, I It's the most sought after sample I have. So when yeah. I visit retailers, they always ask for the Habano. So I do not smoke them nearly as much as I'd like. Ah, yeah. Um, in fact, I bought a five pack uh, because I was out of samples and I was going on a on a birthday trip back in November. So you knew you'd need it. And I was like, I, you know, I, I know I'm going to be smoking cigars. My wife got us an Airbnb, and and I'm going to be smoking cigars all day. So I, I went to my one of my retailers and I bought a five pack of Toros just so I could smoke them. Yeah. And uh, I love that cigar, and I, and I would love to. 
I'd love for y'all to try it, and, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. I would say I endorse it heavily. So you play your cards out, I might give you one today. My God, there we go. I mean, we'll see. I don't know. Well, there we go. Well, where can people find out more about Crux Cigars? So we have CruxCigars.com. Um, our Instagram is at Crux Cigars. Um, if you go on CruxCigars.com, we do have a, a retailer locator page, so you can find out where to find Crux in your area. Um, I'm Sam Ventura Crux on Instagram. You can always reach out to me if you if you have a shop that maybe needs some Crux or. Um, if, if you want to try to find something in your area or if you need recommendations, you can always reach out to me, send me a DM. Um, yeah, and we're on Facebook on our Crux Cigars. Perfect. So. so we're here with Bobby Newman of J.C. Newman. How are you doing, Bobby? Well, I'm good. Nick, great to see you. It's always great to see you, sir. We're, here we are in Las Vegas, the TPE show. Yep. And, and six weeks later, we'll be back here for the, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, PCA. Yeah. And so how has the show been for you guys? It's been good. Uh, it's the... We're, we're seeing a lot of our bigger customers, and a lot of the, the medium-sized customers are not coming, uh, or are not here. Uh, obviously, we all have show specials, all of our competitors yeah. and our friends who are our competitors, of course. And uh, but uh, the show's been good. Uh, yesterday, we've been over one. We brought eight people with us, and, and we could have brought probably twelve. Oh wow! So, there's so much interest. We're seeing a lot of new people around the country who are just getting into the industry. Yeah. And uh, I think the industry is, is kind of starting to flatten out. But COVID brought in, COVID was a disaster for the world, but it brought in hundreds of thousands, maybe a million new consumers. They're staying home and they, uh, because of COVID, and they had nothing to do except smoke premium cigars yeah. and drink. No, that's a really valid point. And I mean, to your point also, on the retail side, I can think of at least two or three friends of mine who, since COVID, have opened up cigar lounges. Oh, yeah. That they, they, for whatever, I don't know if it's one of those things of like, oh, time is short, let's get into it or whatever. But they threw caution to the wind and they opened up their own shops and have been doing well. So We're seeing, we have 18, uh, 18 person sales force in America. And then we have an uh, operation over it in the EU. And we're seeing what's happened in America, the same thing happening in the EU. Explosion, interest. It's funny, in the EU they call uh, they call the Cuban cigars the old world cigars. The cigars from Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic are called new world cigars. Yeah. And they, they're, they're falling in love with, with new world cigars. Interesting, so, interesting. Well, there's a lot to fall in love with with your brand because, I mean, let's, let's just briefly recap 2023. You had Angel Cuesta right. come out. You had the Brick House Ciento Por Ciento TAA come out. Right. Um, Yagua came back for another year. Right. What else am I? What else? I mean, I know I'm missing some stuff. Well, you, and also, uh, there's a famous painter. Unless you're yes. probably uh, Leroy Neiman, and unless you're probably you have to be over 40 to remember him. Leroy Neiman was the first artist that started painting Olympic athletes, and his art was so beautiful. Sports Illustrated putting on the cover. And they started paying NFL players and became world renowned. And of course, we loved him because he's a cigar smoker. Yeah. He came to Tampa and he always liked to smoke the, the long, uh, we, we would call it Panatella, and now they call it, it's a different name. But uh, uh, he died maybe 20 years ago. His foundation, his family foundation, contacted uh, my brother and I, are the third generation, contacted the fourth generation led by Drew Newman, yeah. who's Eric, my brother's son, and my nephew. And they wanted to. They asked us if we would make a private label cigar for them in, in Tampa. And so Drew thought about it. He said, "I will do it under one condition: that all the money that we make on it, that if you'll allow us to give back to Hillsborough County in Tampa, it's a couple million people in the Tampa Bay area, mm -hmm. and to give back to the public school art department, because the first thing the, these local governments do when they start taking money away from the school." They cut the art department. Art and music, uh, yep. Yeah, art and music, yeah. So uh, so now we have one roller. It's all he does is make the Leroy Neiman. And we had our first uh, allocation back in November of, of last year. And the thing is, it's a wonderful cigar. It's, uh, the bottom of the box is gorgeous. It drew uh, and Rich Dolak and Crystal, our vice president of sales and marketing, they designed it, and my brother, and the bottom of the box, the great when you take the cigars out, the bottom of the box is a replica of, of, of 
Leroy Neiman's art gallery where he operated. And it looks like a, you know, has multiple paintings. It looks like paint drops. Oh, neat. Very, very unique. But the cigar, we went on the road, started doing promotions in December, and uh, most anybody could get was four boxes. Yeah, we make less than 100 a day. Yeah. And we have to age it for a year. So it's a very small production. But people smoke it, and uh, they said, my God, they, they buy the whole box. And it's a $20 cigar, which today is not that expensive, relatively speaking. Yeah. But uh, anyway, it's a great, great value. And uh, so uh, we're, you know, the industry... And is that made, I'm sorry, not to interrupt, is that made in your factory in Tampa? Right on the third floor. El Rey Lo. It's made next to the Angel Cuesta, which is made next to the American. And Drew had this idea to do a 100% American-grown tobacco, yeah. wrapper binder filler. And we couldn't have done it without Jeff, Jeff Borshowitz. Jeff, you know, he, he has, Jeff has five very large, uh, they call it Corona cigar shops, and uh, cigar bars, beautiful. And he grows, he's the first person to grow tobacco in Florida since they stopped in 1977. So he's growing tobacco uh, 20 miles northwest of Walt Disney World. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's called Florida Sun Grow. <laughs> yeah. So we buy all this tobacco, and we take it down to our factory in Esteli, then we take, we pick out the best leaf, we are picking all the wrappers, we send everything else to Drew Estate, we all work together, yeah. and they make a cigar for him called, called Florida Sun Grove. Okay. And then they, and they sell it around the country. So our industry is, especially since we've been through this political war with the FDA, we've gotten very close, because a very famous man named Benjamin Franklin once said, either we hang together or we're going to hang separately. <laughs> no, it's very true. And your, guy, your company and, and Drew, to give him credit, very instrumental in the uh, fight in Washington, D.C. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. You know, we were very blessed. Uh, an Obama appointee uh, named Judge Beta uh, in the uh, district, uh, the federal district court, uh, deregulated premium cigars. And we thought there would be a better chance of having a blizzard in Key West in August. <laughs> With eight feet of snow, I think. No, it's yeah. amazing. So, unfortunately, the, the Department of Justice uh, is pushed by the FDA. They want to overturn them. Yeah. But the thing is, the FDA made a little mistake. The ruling was because they were arbitration. They were, they were, um, uh, they were, I just mentioned this. But the two words, uh, they were... Oh, capricious and or maybe arbitracious. Anyway, basically they lied to the FDA. Yeah. The FDA, and we were concerned, they hired a year earlier all these world famous uh, chemists, toxologists, scientists, to find out what cigars do to a human. And they, they concluded that the average American cigar smoker smokes 1.7 cigars a month and it would not affect mortality. And the FDA, that was their study. That wasn't Nick's study. Yeah, that wasn't my study. Yep. And now and the FDA lied to the court. And the judge rightfully said, because the, the FDA said you shouldn't smoke cigars. So, so, so we, we, have, we now have science behind us. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Bobby, is there anything you want to promote as we're heading into 2024? Yeah, yes, there is. And uh, what, what's that? We have one of our FDA law, uh, federal uh, f f attorneys here. Uh, but yeah, I would say to promote the industry, to stay, keep, to keep abreast who your your state, your city, state, and federal uh, representatives are, and tell them don't don't tax, don't raise taxes on cigars, and don't uh, leave, leave premium cigars alone. It's one go. of the great equalizers in life. You there sit you down, go. Republican, Democrat, Independent. You sit down with them. You got a common bond, and that's most important. Well, there so, you go. So well, Nick, thank you so much. Fantastic speaking with you. Great. We'll have to get you on the show for a longer interview we'll, coming up here soon. We'll love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And guys, we're here with Huso Aroa of Aladino Cigars. How you doing, Huso? Hey, great to see you, Nick. Great it's to... always a true pleasure to see you. It is the, always a pleasure to see you as well. So how has TPE been for you? You know what? The first day was a little bit slow, but yeah. so far, I mean, the second day picked up pretty much. So Good. We're, we're very happy, you know. And I can tell because, you know, when my wife is sad and gets a, a cranky, you know, that means orders have not orders come in. Orders haven't come in. Yeah, but yesterday, <laughs> at the end of the day, she was very, very happy. Fantastic. I like to hear that. Yeah. So, 
you guys premiered the new uh, Candela Toro here at the show. Yes, yes. What has the response been to that? Well, so far, every almost every single, I would say, nine out of ten accounts already that came in already ordered it. Yeah. Uh, as you know, last year we did a all the all the all the stores that have been to the farm. Yeah. We did a small batch release around 450 or 500 boxes. And of the were, Robusto. Of the Robusto yeah. Candela, they were distributed in like 30 stores. They sold out really quickly, but it was closer to uh, St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So we're getting the, the candela now, and we're also going to feature it in, 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 in uh, PCA, so therefore it's going to be ready or close to uh, to St. Patrick's, and people are going to be able to do that. Perfect. We're not sure yet if it's going to be a continuous line, but yeah. I think it's it was a very happy addition. People were very happy with, with, with the with the response uh, to, to the flavor profile. I really liked it because I'll be honest, Candela is not my favorite. Typically it's very grassy, very kind of like not one notice. I'm not a big fan. And uh, you know, when Trey Mac came to me and said, hey, we're doing a Candela, I'm like, we are, you know? And uh, I tried it and I'm like, holy crap, this is like a Candela with like different flavors and it's, it's exciting and it's good. And it doesn't have that kind of grassy, kind of lawn clipping note that you get from other candles. Not not to diminish, you know, other candles. Oh, other candles. Not, no, I, I, get don't, I don't want I, get, I don't no, want to get it. It's, it's normally a taste my, profile that you have my opinion, in a natural opinion. green leaf. It's gonna be more grassier Precisely. because it's not an aged tobacco it's not aged tobacco. Basically you're getting a, a tobacco where through a heat process you basically uh, basically uh, make the leaf and you, you and you how do you call it? You, you you do not let the leaf go through a process maturity uh, Process of uh, of fermentation, ripening, ripening. Oh, okay. oh no, 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 R being being ripe, right? Okay. Oh, right. okay. So therefore, you fix the chlorophyll yeah. with heat. Therefore, oh. it's got a more grassier process. So within 48 hours, you heat it up, and and you fix the chlorophyll. The leaf stays green. Yeah. It doesn't go and start turning brown like you normally do in a, in, 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 in a regular leaf. Yeah. And therefore, you have that. But one of the things that we have learned, we're the largest grower of candela in the world back in the 70s, early 80s. Yeah. And uh, my dad is also an aficionado of the candela. So what we did is, uh, with the Corojo binder and Corojo filler, it overpowers that grassiness of, 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 the, yeah. of the candela. And you'll get a natural sweetness to, to the candela that... It's normally not detected in, in, in many of the candelas, so that's well. It's super good. So if any of you retailers that are listening right now, you haven't gotten in on the candela toro that's coming out this year, you need to reach out to Aladino and get your hands on some because let me tell you, it, for St. Patrick's Day or just everyday smoking, this is a really really good. <laughs> yeah, cigar. something completely different, and you know, uh, you never know. The fads come in. You know, many skirts were in the '60s that they never on. Now maybe Candela could be another fad, and I think that's something that if you want to smoke something really close to nature and green and natural, that's the way to do it. There you go. And where can people find out more information about Aladino Cigars? Well, Aladino Cigars, they can always call you to ask that's for the true. program. That's there true. you go. I mean, this is uh, the, how do you call it, the mobile Aladino. Uh, this is the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios yeah. right here. Thank you Who's so much, so Nick. Thank it's great you for to see taking you. time out. I Have really a safe trip back it. home, and I'll see you soon. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we're here at TPE with Michael Herklotz of Ferry Otago. How you doing, Michael? You know, that's an interesting question. How is anyone doing after three days in Las Vegas? I'm dehydrated and tired. Yes. And ready to go home. Yes. Yeah. But on a on a Vegas scale, yeah. if we're grading on the curve, yeah. I'd say A plus. Good. 10 out of 10. Good. Yeah. So the show's been good for you? The show's been great. Perfect. So what do you want to talk about with Ferry Otago? Man, I know you had the Suma. Yeah, we're... we're We've, we've talked about this before. Yeah. We are not a company that is growing based on what's new. Yeah. We're a company that's growing based on what's consistent and what's great and what do people love. So Suma has been a huge success since we launched this summer. Metropolitan has been a huge success since it launched in 1995. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we have, a, we have a portfolio that people are uh, on, on one side still discovering and then on the other side still depending on. So we're having we're having a great show. We're growing our business. We're entering our third year in the market. It's an exciting time to be in the business. Man. Perfect, perfect. And uh, you know, retailers that you've talked to, how have they? Have you gotten any word as to what their opinions of the show and everything is? I haven't asked. Okay. Well, there you go. I haven't asked. All right. We've. Uh, you know, I'm not. 
I'm not interested in their opinion of the show. I'm okay. interested in their opinion on how we can do business better yeah. or can we consider doing business to start with. So is there something that you kind of come away from this show with, though? Like, is there like this a, is an important a show. nugget of knowledge? This show is not PCA. For sure. Right? This show is a different segment of customer, different segment of store. And so there's a lot to learn about how they go to market. And, and if these are typically unconventional premium cigar stores, the fact that they are open to the category is a huge opportunity to help guide them and share with them what makes this category special and important. For sure. So I love having those conversations, which is why I love this particular show. And as a business, it helps expand your pie. Yeah, of course, man. If, if we can be a valuable partner and help introduce this category to somebody, you know, that's a... It's, it's a real opportunity, you know? Perfect, perfect. Well, where can people find out more about Feriotego? Feriotego.com, Feriotego Cigars on Twitter, Feriotego on Instagram and Facebook, and uh, I think that's all of it. There you go. But we're easy to find. There just Google. Go. Just put it in the Google. You know what I mean? Just Ferio the Just put it in the Google. You'll find this. <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much for taking Good time see, out. Man. Good Always. to see you. Good to Ferio see you. Feriotego. So I'm here with Tom from Altidus. How you doing, Tom? Uh, pretty good. Last day of the show. Yeah. So what have you got to promote to the people? Well, for new stuff, if you want to go around, I'll yeah. take you around really quick. Okay. Uh, let's start off for here with the, the day trader from uh, A. Chapman. Okay. So this is fairly new. This is going to be an extension of the original banker right here. Uh, just to give you a little quick heads up, the wrapper on this cigar is going to be Ecuadorian and the binder will be Nicaraguan. And then the filler is going to be Dominican and Nicaraguan. Okay. Um, down here we have the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez, the Heritage. This is a dark, rich cigar, a lot of chocolate cocoa notes in that. And then this is the original one that he did for us uh, several years back, which is the uh, H. Upman by A.J. Okay. Um, this is a I bit... do really enjoy that cigar a so lot. So this cigar is, is full of flavor. Yeah. This cigar is going to be deeper and richer. Okay. But it doesn't overwhelm your palate. Okay. It, it won't, it, it, it's not going to be strong. It's just going to be delicious. Perfect. Yeah. I like it. I like it. And then if you come over here. We're walking. We're walking. So up top, we've got the aging room. This is going to be, this was the cigar of the year. This blend was cigar of the year. Okay. Okay. And then uh, just a several months back, we just came out with the aging room Sonata. Uh, these are both Nicaraguan cigars. The difference is that very deep and rich. This right here is the wrapper is also Nicaraguan. It's a lighter Nicaraguan wrapper. Okay. But just think of like if you're adding some cream to your coffee. Oh. So this has got more of a creamier taste and finish on the cigar. Perfect. But delicious. Perfect. And then. And we're walking again. We're walking again. Ooh. If you come over here. <laughs> Sorry. This is line extension for the Reserve Real Nicaraguan. So we have two sizes. We've got the Toro and we've got a love story. And this is the Midnight Twist. So it's got the secondary band on the outside that's doing the twist action there on the cigar. So it's going to add some uh, extra flavor and some um, really uh, unique notes as you're smoking. Perfect. So really I really nice. do enjoy the... Uh... This, will, this will ship in March to oh. retailers. All right. I'm a big fan of the uh, Reserve Real Nicaragua. Uh, I smoke that like on the regular, so this is intriguing to me. And it got some really good ratings as well. All right. Out of the gate. Okay. Um, just up top, we did some uh, limited editions. We did a Romeo Eternal and a Romeo Envy. These came out last year. They did extremely well for us. They're still available. And let's come over here, take a look. We're walking. So this is going to be this is the original St. Louis Ray. Or one of them, the, the, or one of the line extensions we did, and now we just did a secondary uh, to the St. Louis Ray as well. All right. Uh, what's nice about this cigar is that it is wallet friendly. Perfect. So not, That's important this time, yeah, you know, in the economy and everything. Around 10 or under for that cigar. Perfect, perfect. And then over here we have the Vega Fina Classic, uh, which this is going to be for the year of the Dragon. So this is a limited cigar. This is 600 and no, 6,888 um, boxes made for the uh, 
retailers here in the United States. Okay. So it's eight on the top, eight on the bottom. Obviously eight because it coincides and kind of gears up with the, the lucky number eight in the Asian culture. All right. No, it's a beautiful box. It's, they have wonderful looking bands and I mean, it's a very nice presentation. Yeah, they did a really good job. They sure did. And let's see, over here we have well, we've got the Monte Cristo 1935. The, the number two was uh, num it was number two cigar of the year back in uh, 2021. Okay. And then we did a Monte Cristo Diamante. Uh, this came out uh, several months back. This is a very unique cigar because this this wrapper was grown in Nicaragua um, by Mr. AJ Fernandez and then he aged it for five years. So very special oh. wrapper to go on this cigar. All right. And it is quite delicious. And it's a slow burner too. Oh, that's nice. So yeah. this is gonna be- You get a lot of time. You got, yeah, this is a couple of cocktails and a, with a beautiful cigar. Perfect, yeah. sounds like a good night. Yeah. And I think, oh, let's come over here and let's, let's save one of the, the newer brands right here. The, the new Tiamo, which is the original San Andreas Valley cigar. This is going to be, all this tobacco is grown in the wrapper and the binder are Cuban seed grown in the San Andreas Valley. All right. So this is uh, something new from Tiamo and we have a great relationship with them as well. So we brought it on board. This is something that we've been working on for a while. Okay. So it wasn't just like, oh, you. You see it, and it's like, oh, it's like out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. This takes years to actually make. Okay. Yeah. Well, Tom, I want to thank you so much for taking time out. I know my dad is very excited to try Enjoy the new Tayamo. I will definitely do so. Thank you so much for taking time out. I really do appreciate it. All right. Cheers. Thanks. All right, so guys, we're here with Mickey Pegg of All Saints Cigars, and uh, how's the uh, show been for you, Mickey? It's been okay. Yeah. Uh, it's good. Our I mean, first day was better. our best first day, but yeah. yeah. We'll see what's uh, got some follow-ups today, but it, it's always great. I know that this portion of the show is shrinking and shrinking on, a, on the premium side. Yeah. But it's always just great to uh, just see people like you, you know? I think the last time I saw you was... Florida. Uh, Palm Coast. Yep. Over yep. Ken. Over Ash Ken's. and Ale. Yep. He's around, or he was He around. said he was going to come by. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't seen him yet today, but I know he's around. He's probably looking for so. an ale, because there's plenty of ash. Ash and ale. There is, there is ale that way, though. Oh. You know, if you're looking for an ale later yourself. Maybe later. Maybe later. Yeah. Uh, so I'm already you, jacked up. I know. I can tell. Look I at you. It. Yeah, I would have figured by, you know, third day of the show, you'd be dragging ass. No, nah, I get excited. I mean, it's like anything. You get an adrenaline rush. Yeah. You know, anything that, uh, you know, we're next to Aganor Salif and our new friends at uh, 1910, Ian over there at... Uh, Dapper, you got, you know, Tony and those guys over there, and uh, Jake, and it's just, uh, our Bovida partners are right around the corner, and uh, uh, this is the first time that McAuliffe and I was, All Saints had, together, at the last minute, we were able to put this together, that's was, why it's only solo branded, and we don't have anything branded from the McAuliffe side. All right, I was going to ask so. you how that's going, because yes, you do have both McAuliffe and All Saints yeah, yeah. on display. Lauren's here. Come over and say hi, Lauren. Alec, get over here. Say hi. Hello. Hi. You got to get, get up screen. close to Mickey's mic there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there you go. Frank, get over here and say oh, hi. And then Frank, my partner's here. There you go. So where we've come together, you know, uh, this partnership, it's really exciting. So it's one sales force selling two different portfolios. Yeah. We're leveraging each other's pieces of that we have that we can fill, gap fill with, to make the sales process better. We, we, got a, we, we should have a New England event coming on soon, and we're looking for a Texas right now, and Lauren's beating the drum. She's partly in the field, partly in headquarters, and it does our marketing things on every Tuesday, East Coast time. Okay. Um, McAuliffe Ambassadors, what we give out? I don't know, you talk about that. Okay, so actually, hey, Ellen, can you grab me a fade five? So, and I just got the email from Amanda. I don't know if you've seen it yet. We co-branded this because it was confusing people. Oh, okay. Now, it's Lawrence. So, this basically, Mikal, uh, I feel like an incentive of our company is to help and empower our customers to be uh, successful and to curate programs for them to, like, 
set them up for success in because the longevity of the cigar industry is in our cigar lounges, it's in our brick and mortars, it's in our mom and pop shops. That's the integral part of cigar culture. So we want to make programs that are going to help them succeed. Especially when their credit card works. Yeah. That's, that helps. Well, customers that pay are fantastic. I love that. <laughs> pay your bills. I love you even more. But, so we created this Fave 5 program. And essentially... Oh, thank you. So essentially, uh, they smoke five different Macau cigars or All Saints cigars, and they put them in this little booklet, and they can enter as many times as they want, but they can also win as many times as they want. So it's oh. a very successful program. So we have we have one ambassador, he just, at the, uh, the beginning of the year, it was like 66 entries he Oh did. my gosh. Yeah, but it's great. So we do a drawing every week. We pull about $250 worth of gift cards, so you can win. So we'll have people that maybe win $100 or $50, and then they may win more each week. And so we channel that back into our McCall carrying brick and mortars and our All Saints brick and mortars. Yep. So we're giving that money directly back to our customers. Okay. So I'll our retailers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our retailers. So I'll call them up, and be like, "Hey, so and so won a $100 gift card." give them money right away and then I keep channeling that in and it's it, it is a loyalty program but yeah. it's helping out our, our brick and mortars and our retailers no that's great that's really awesome mm -hmm. and you said that this applies both with Macallus cigars and All Saints yeah. cigars yeah we just got the artwork yesterday so this will be co-branded mm -hmm. we're actually out of stock of this one okay and no matter how many times you tell a retailer and a consumer that they can use both and that, understandably they forget and it's a great little cheat sheet, too, because it has a quick synopsis on all the blends that we have at Perfect. market. Perfect. So it's multifunctional. And also on the back, gives you a chance to become, you hit that QR code and become a uh, McAuliffe ambassador. And we're working on uh, incorporating the All Saints crew with that, too. But you get a coin in about two weeks. Okay. Uh, Amy Hart sends those out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a family effort. It's a family-owned company. Frank and I, well, he's not family, he's... Ish. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're all family here. <laughs> Don't touch me, Alan. <laughs> no, so, good. We're uh, excited to have uh, our first time that we've been in a trade show together. Fantastic. And then looking ahead to PCA, yeah. the plans there, are you guys going to be, I assume, co-branded at yeah. PCA so we're, as well? We're going to be the same booth. So okay. we just got that diagram. And what's interesting about that, we were close to signing the contracts around PCA. Yeah. They weren't done. We just didn't want to do it. So we didn't say something to PCA because, you know, how this yeah, industry yeah. is. Yeah. And no disrespect to PCA. I love those guys. I've been no. part of them for 30 years. But almost. you got to keep things in house until yeah. it's all done. And then we called them right away after the contracts were signed. And they were very, very good about working hard to get us in the same booth together. Fantastic. It kind of, kind of started in the same area. Yeah. And then we got it all together. So we're going to have the confessional booth there again this year. Okay. So Frank's in charge of that. Father Frank. Oh, yeah? Any yeah. any any juicy stories you've heard in your confessional booth? No. Well, they, uh, the, they oh. do the confessional on, um, on uh, I know. Cigar Authority. On the authority. Yeah. I get it. You're right. not doing it on the pulpit. The actual, like, you know, spreading the good word of the cigar. I can't afford but... you, man. You're so expensive. Oh, I don't want to hear that. Anyway. <laughs> no. no. You've gotten the worst confession out of me I at know. 11 o'clock at night I know. in a humidor <laughs> doing that interview. And then I told Mr. Jonathan and he prompted you to do it on that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mom I charged on my company credit card it was golf and it came in it wasn't golf or anything. Oh. So, I don't okay. know what that means but don't worry about it. We'll let the CFO figure it out. Alright then. Alright. Anyway, so where can people find out more information about All Saints and McAuliffe Cigars? It's very easy. You could go on uh, either one of the social media at All Saints Cigars, All Saints Cigars Crew, at McAuliffe Cigars, and at McAuliffe Ambassadors. Okay. And uh, our websites are All Saints Cigars and All uh, McAuliffe yeah, Cigars. 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 Yeah. Perfect. We keep it simple for everybody. There you go. Well, thank you both for your time. Yes. Or thank all you. three of you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. All right. And I want to thank everybody for taking time out of their day at TPE to discuss their brands with me. Um, you know, I know uh, there were some of these guys that when I was sitting down with them, they're like, I don't have anything new to talk about. Because let's be real, with the pushing up of PCA, 
Um, a lot of the new stuff they may have been unveiling at TPE. They were choosing to hold off 60 more days and unveil at PCA. And I get that. So they really didn't have anything new to talk about. But it uh, doesn't mean I don't like catching up and saying hi to you guys. So I appreciate you taking time out of your day to do so. Um, final thought on TPE for me. Um, you know, I, I, I sent a recap to somebody and I'm just going to, uh, bring that up now because, um, you know, it's just, it's, 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 I summed it up pretty, pretty well. Um, cigar companies reported doing a third of their business this year versus last year. If booth space wasn't so affordable, it would have been a bloodbath. Uh, it's obvious that the show has gone all in on vapes and gummies and quasi legal drugs. Blue carpet was the entire show floor from previous year's shows and took up 75% of the first floor showroom. Many blue carpet businesses were on the red carpet too, leading me to think that they had cigar companies downsize their booths or bail out, leaving open space on the red carpet that needed filling. Um, you know, by end of day Friday and early Saturday, I knew of only one or two brands that were actually happy. Uh, by end of day, uh, I, I'm sorry, that should have been Wednesday and Thursday, not Friday and Saturday. Um, you know, by end of day Thursday, people were doing better ish. Um, but, uh, you know, by, by Friday, everyone was trying to be positive and put a good spin on it. But I think everyone would agree, agree that it was rough this year versus previous years. Uh, moving PCA definitely gutted the cigar side of TPE. Uh, it may be an affordable show for little brands, but if there's nobody there, Meaning retailers, because, again, I think retailers looked at the calendar and said, I could go to Vegas in January. I can go to Vegas in March. I'm not going to be able to go to both. January is a really slow time for me, so I really don't have the money to go to Vegas in January. They are paying for my rooms two nights, so maybe I'll at least go for that. And I think that's what happened. I think that's why Thursday was a good day, because these retailers, all they had to pay for was um, a, a, a midweek flight to and from Vegas, and they had to, you know, pay the resort fees at the hotels. But that's it, you know. So I think offering those rooms really was the only real reason you saw a lot of retailers come out. Um, it just it is what it is. But um, yeah, that's 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 my perspective. Is that PCA moving? Um, it it gutted. TPE and um, the show, it it was it, it was what it was at that point. So anyway, um, now let's go ahead and uh, finish up a little bit more housekeeping here. This would normally be the time that I give some information about my monthly cigars, but I've hired that out this week, so take it away. My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service. It comes in a variety of different size boxes at affordable prices. Use offer code PULPIT and get free shipping on your first box and 20% off any items in the online store at MyMonthlyCigars.com. That's offer code PULPIT. Thanks. While you guys are over there, make sure you check out the fucking good coffee. Uh, he's got the daily press. He's got the lounge blend. He's got other, a lot of other great blends that you're going to want to try and be on the lookout because Nick's big announcement, as you heard in a prior, you know, an episode a week ago was, uh, the fucking good cigar. So you're going to want to make sure you're uh, on whatever email lists and that sort of thing. So you can check out and try the fucking good cigar, uh, coming to you from, uh, fucking good coffee and, um, my monthly cigars and United cigars. So, uh, it's going to be a great, great, great product. I'm sure. Um, anyway, in terms of the socials, I'm available on Instagram at the cigar pulpit I'm on, uh, Facebook where we have the cigar pulpit parishioners group, Twitter slash X at the cigar pulpit, YouTube. You can check me out here and you know, it's, that's probably about it for right now. Um, that's enough. I feel like that's enough. Um, anyway, uh, I don't mean to like shit on TPE in terms of, uh, you know, the show, uh, you know, it was, uh, as always, it was a nice time to see everybody catch up with everybody, say hi. Um, you know, and I do think that it maybe has 
a place. Uh, I do think that these brands are going to have to, they're going to have to figure out, you know, the strategy for it. Um, maybe bringing out your whole sales force to Vegas twice a year or, well, I mean, let's next year PCA moves to New Orleans and that's a whole different thing. Um, but maybe, uh, maybe bringing out your whole sales force to TPE isn't worth it. Maybe it's one of those things where you just send a, st- a select couple of salespeople to go out there, handle the business, and, and move on. Um, maybe you downsize your booth space considerably. I mean, you know, you had a couple of brands. Placencia had a nice big booth. Um, Drew Estate had another huge booth. Um, yeah, you had a couple of brands that had some really big booth space. And I don't know if they're going to need that in future years. So maybe they downsize their booth space a little bit. Um, you know, it's, 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 I do think that there's a purpose to it. Um, you know, if convenience stores are looking to uh, offer premium cigars to their customers, you know, you want to be there, you want to represent. Um, there are some cigar stores that still go, you know, they'll, they'll still go. Um, but uh, yeah, by and large, I do think that this show has definitely gone all in on the blue carpet product. I think the cigars are a tag along at this point. Whereas it felt like in the, co- the last couple of years, it felt like P- TPE was making a big push for the cigars. And I think that uh, I think PCA flexed its muscles and, and uh, kind of crippled TPE this year. I would be curious to go to PCA. I have been approved for a media pass. However, I will say... Cost of hotel and airfare is extraordinarily high. PCA has a habit of picking weekends um, for their show that uh, coincide with big events. This year, um, PCA kicks off in Las Vegas the day after March Madness kicks off, which is, oh, I don't know, one of the busiest weekends in Las Vegas. Um, So, needless to say, rooms are expensive, flights are expensive, and everything's fucking busy so you know that's a problem next year in new orleans they are having their show the same weekend as the french quarter festival which is the second largest festival in los in new orleans behind mardi gras so you know that's a problem uh hotels are going to be uh expensive and hard to come by so you know i just i i don't quite know what's up with the uh decision making there but it is but it's not my business it's not my not my problem. Um, so anyway, so that that that's that. But uh, yeah, I would say that um, TPE was a very different experience this year. Um, otherwise, I don't really know what else to say. Um, guys, I appreciate you uh, taking time out and um, listening to this. And like I said, on um, Tuesday, we will be joined by Jonas from Blackbird Cigars to talk all about everything going on in his company. So with that, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. Stay safe and stay smoky.